their contributions. It's major contribution to a country that didn't want them. They were basically the unwanted soldiers. The unwanted soldiers were Chinese Canadians who fought during World War II. But in order to do that, they had to win their own war on the home front. This is one way that we can prove our loyalty to Canada if we're able to join and fight for Canada. It doesn't matter which front, there was a European front and the Southeast Asian front, that they were willing to join up. Being willing was only half the battle. When the war began in 1939, the Canadian government was discriminating when it came to accepting soldiers. Most countries would give citizenship to any people serving in the military. Well, Canada looked at it and said, no, because if we accept them, then we have to give these Chinese citizenship. So there was this group then of military age trying to make changes and try to now look at their loyalty to the country, which was Canada. They were born here, and Canada rejected them. But after Pearl Harbor, things started to change. If you were living in eastern Canada, a few of our people were able to slip through and join up. Everybody claimed that I slipped through the, uh, the crack. I didn't realize that they were not accepting Chinese in the armed forces. I came to Vancouver from Alert Bay, and I just went to the recruiting office, and they signed me up, and that was it. I was the only Chinese in my unit. Frank Wong, who served in Europe, saw the military as a way to elevate his status. I figured if I enlist in the armed forces, there's a possibility I might get the right to vote, since at that time I was a second-class citizen. As second-class citizens, Chinese Canadians endured constant discrimination. When I was young, when I go to a theater, we have to sit in the back seat, the back row, and then um, we are not allowed to go swimming in the in the public pool. But Frank Wong's military uniform became the great equalizer. I was pretty proud of myself, you know, and I walked down the street there and, and everybody looked at me, you know, and I, I was treated just like anybody else, just like a, a Canadians, you know. As the war shifted to Southeast Asia, Chinese-speaking soldiers were needed. Under pressure from the British, the Canadian government allowed more Chinese Canadians to enlist. We picked up some of the main articles. As president of the Chinese Canadian Military Sorry. Museum Society, Hao Li helps to preserve these soldiers' stories. One of the most famous is that of Douglas Jung, who was a member of an elite secret force. They had to volunteer for this service because it was codename Operation Oblivion. They were also told that they were not expected to come out of the war alive. And they were to be trained as commandos and they were to be dropped in behind the enemy lines to spy or report on Japanese activities. Operation Oblivion was a success and for these soldiers, 13 was a lucky number. They all came back. So all 13 came back out of the war alive, including the two British officers for what they did, four of the 13 were awarded the uh, military medal. Douglas Jung went on to make history as the first Chinese-Canadian member of parliament. Other Chinese-Canadians made history too. Brothers Albert and Cedric Ma, who were expert pilots, were rejected by the Royal Canadian Air Force because they were Chinese. So instead, they joined the China National Aviation Corporation jointly owned by Pan American Airlines and the Chinese government. Their job was to fly supplies over the Himalayas and into China. Between the two of them, they flew more than 800 missions. And uh, for their contribution, Albert and Cedric received the Distinguished Flying Cross from the U.S. government. Chinese Canadians didn't win the right to vote until after the war. But that didn't stop nearly 1,000 of them from fighting for their country. They left for war as unwanted soldiers, but returned as heroes. When I look back, I could say, hey, I did my duty. I served my country. This history, this contribution, should not be forgotten.